General Jonathan Moulton, born 21st of July 1726, died 18th of September 1787. Jonathan Moulton started as an apprentice to a cabinet maker, but in 1745 he left, and started his career in the New England Army. He fought in the King George War, and the French and Indian War. He married in 1749, and sired 11 children. He became one of the wealthiest men in New Hampshire, and this led to later tales of his deal with the devil. In 1769 the mansion he built in a poor Puritan town burned to the ground. Popular belief at the time, was that Moulton had a pact with the devil, wherein he would fill Moulton's boots to the brim with gold once a month in return for his soul. It was said that, Moulton thought up a clever ploy, and placed his boots with the soles cut off over a large hole in the ground. The devil, wondering why it was taking so much gold to fill the boots discovered the trick, and exacted revenge. It is believed that, when Moulton died his body disappeared out of the coffin, and was replaced by a box of coins stamped with an image of the devil. Moulton's coffin was buried with no grave marker and its location is unknown. Gilles de Race, born 1404 died 1440. Gilles de Race was considered intelligent, courageous, and very attractive with a bluish-black beard. Born to one of the most distinguished families in Brittany, he came into his own when his father died in Gilles' twentieth year. He found himself with untold wealth, and power which eventually led to his downfall. Gilles got an attack of keeping up with the Joneses, which ultimately led to the loss of much of his wealth. In desperation he began to experiment with the occult, under the direction of a man, named Francesco Prelotti, who promised that, Gilles could help him regain his squandered fortune, by sacrificing children to a demon called Baron. Over the course of his killing spree, Gilles raped, tortured, and murdered between 80 and 200 children. He was tried, found guilty, and executed by hanging and burning. Giuseppe Tartini, born 8 April 1692, died February 26, 1770. Tartini was an Italian composer and violinist. He was one of the most instrumental musical composers having written over 400 works. Unlike most of his contemporaries he wrote no church music or operas, he focused most of his work on violin concerti, and sonatas. His most infamous piece is called, The Devil's Drill Sonata. The story behind Devil's Drill, starts with a dream. Tartini allegedly told the French astronomer Jerome Lalande that, he dreamed that the devil appeared to him, and asked to be his servant. At the end of their lesson Tartini handed the devil his violin, to test his skill the devil immediately began to play with such virtuosity, that Tartini felt his breath taken away. When the composer awoke he immediately jotted down the sonata, desperately trying to recapture what he had heard in the dream. Despite the sonata being successful with his audiences, Tartini lamented that the piece was still far from what he had heard in his dream. What he had written was, in his own words, so inferior to what I had heard, that if I could have subsisted on other means, I would have broken my violin and abandoned music forever. You can listen to part 4 of the piece above, the most difficult section, played by Itzhak Perlman. If you prefer a more techno version of the piece, you can hear Vanessa May playing it here. Johann Georg Faust, born circa 1480, and died circa 1540. Dr. Johann Georg Faust was an itinerant alchemist, astrologer, and magician of the German Renaissance. His life became the nucleus of the popular tale of Dr. Faust from C.A. the 1580s, notably culminating in Marlowe's The Tragical History of Dr. Faustus in 1604, and Gouda's Faust in 1808. Legend has it that, Faust wanted a life of pleasure and having been involved with the occult learned how to summon the devil, having done so he made a deal with him for his soul in return for 24 years of service from Satan. 
Unfortunately, after 16 years he regretted his deal, and wanted to withdraw it. The consequences of this attempt to withdraw the deal are well known to any who have read the various fictional tales of Faust's life. The devil brutally murdered him. Niccolo Paganini Born October 27, 1782, and died May 27, 1840. Niccolo Paganini is one of the greatest violin virtuosos to have ever lived. He learned to play the mandolin at five, and was composing by seven. He started playing publicly at twelve, but by sixteen he had a breakdown, and disappeared into alcoholism. He sobered up and by twenty-two was the first music superstar. Paganini was capable of playing three octaves across four strings in a hand span, a feat that is nearly impossible even by today's standards. He composed 24 caprices at 23, and for years no other violinist was capable of playing much of his music. His playing of tender passages is said to have brought audiences to tears. One of his famous pieces was called, Listerg, which translates to witch's dance. Audiences believed Pagnini made a pact with the devil to perform supernatural displays of technique. Some patrons even claimed to see the devil helping him, during his performances. It is because he was denied the last rites in the church, and his widely rumored association with the devil, that his body was denied a Catholic burial in Genoa.